Welcome back to the Sim Project. Sorry about the lighting down here. The lights in the basement are great for the basement work job. They are lousy for a video studio and the GoPro is not the best in these type of lights. Anyways, today's project, Garmin G1000 part two, I guess, because you've been following the channel at all. I did a part one back uh, like August of last year. We're into April now, so you know it's been like eight months. Um, well, it's done. Um, you can see behind my shoulder here is actually the video running. I just took it upstairs and tested it. I'll throw that up here in a minute. Uh, works excellent. Got a few minor little tweaks to make on it still. But yeah, that's it. Uh, let me get zoomed in here a little bit best I can. Like I said, the GoPro is not the best for doing this kind of stuff. This is the Garmin G1000 NXi. So there is no autopilot in this one. And that is because, let me find it where I put it here. I am prototyping an autopilot. I found this on Thingiverse. Like I say again, GoPro is probably not really good for this not showing up. Um, I've got it built up. I've got it mostly wired. I was a little skeptical about it in the first place. The pictures on Thingiverse weren't the best about it. Um, actually, it's very impressed. I'm quite happy with it. I am going to uh, go forward and I'm going to modify and backlight the buttons. So this one's probably not going to get built beyond that. Um, I'm gonna, I'll rob the pots and stuff out of it and send that off to recycling. Anyways. Back to the G1000. Uh, this is the Flight Sim DIY version. It's not the version I was building originally. I switched over to this right around Christmas time, I guess I picked this up, because this has got circuit boards in it, which makes life so much simpler for wiring, so much simpler for troubleshooting. And the big one with it is it talks to all of the other Flight Sim DIY units for controlling backlights, and you can share Mobi Flight modules. For what I was doing, it just seems it's going to work out to be the better panel for the interface side of things. The build quality is, is pretty much the same as the uh, the other one I was working on. So this just uh, this just going to suit my needs more. But yeah, that's it. Um, they like say it's not done. All the circuit boards and everything hanging off the back for the monitor. Uh, that is going to get cleaned up. I'm not leaving it zip tied. I am going to build an actual panel to put all this stuff in. That's going to be probably a three-part video series coming here and in the next month or so, I'm going to do a, a basic layout construction. I got some real nice faux carbon fiber wrap to put around the panel and the glare shield I've built. Uh, there's a glare shield video right there above me if you want to check that out, the 3D printed glare shield I did. Um, then I'm going to do a second video with the electrical layout because, um, of course, we've got a bunch of 12 volt stuff. Uh, there's some 5 volts for the Mobi Flight or for the uh, Arduino units run by Mobi Flight. Uh, I want to put some relays in it to turn stuff on and off with the aircraft. So that'll be a buildup. And then video three will be configuring all this stuff into Flight Sim. So the whole unit to uh, to buy the files and everything. The circuit boards, I think I was, it was like 30 bucks, I think, to buy the circuit boards. There's two different packages you buy. You buy the base, and I don't know if you can see it back there. There's a big one back there, the Arduino unit's hooked to. And then there's all the smaller ones for the G1000. Um, if you're building like a second one of these and you're going to use one Arduino to control both units, you don't actually need that other board. You just use their um, their little stackable interface cards. So what have I got invested in this? Um, like 20 bucks to buy the circuit boards, 15 for the CAD and 3D print files. Uh, there's the five encoder, dual encoders. They're like five bucks a piece. Um, push button switches, you buy them on eBay for like... I think I bought a pack of a hundred for like eight or nine dollars. They're they're less than ten cents a piece, sort of thing. Um, the one that does cost a little bit and was hard to find the map control switch here. Um, it's actually a little mini joystick. It's a four-way joystick with rotary and push button. That one was like fifteen or sixteen bucks on eBay. I actually bought two of those because I have another project I'm working on that needs one of those as well. Um, Arduino board in the back. I finally found a. Canadian supplier for that Arduino. Uh, if you watch the radio panel build I did, I had to buy it out of the States and it was like a $20 card with $10 shipping. Then when it got here, I got hit with, you know, custom brokerage fees of like $4 or something, almost a waste of time collecting those. But anyways, I did find a spot I can buy these up here for like $24.99, so that's perfect. There's an expansion card down there. I don't know how well you can see that down there. There's a small expansion card because there's more push buttons and stuff on this than the Arduino can handle, so they put the little expansion card in there to give you the extra inputs required. Um, the monitor, again, I'm in Canada. The monitor up here was like 74 bucks on Amazon. 
think they're like $49 in the US you're buying it. So all in, everything, maybe 150 bucks to buy it. Uh, total print time for everything, I think it was about 20 hours of print stuff. It's a lot of little, these, a lot of these parts in the back, a lot of these little standoffs and stuff. So there's lots of little in, intricate pieces to build. Um, probably took me four hours to put everything together, solder it, and then, uh, yeah. So, let me, uh, let me put up, uh, I'll do some little video here with some uh, commentary of some of the build-up stuff, just so you can see that, and then I will take it upstairs and plug it in. Actually, I've already been upstairs. Uh, that's a video you're going to see in the future that was actually shot in the past, so stick around. Okay, so this is a circuit board pack. As you can see with the uh, left and right boards, the left board has got all the extra buttons there if you want to add the autopilot option where, of course, I, like I said, I did the NXI, so I don't have the autopilot, but you can have it there if you want to. I've got the lower board for the 12 lower soft keys in the bottom, and then the right one's got all your push buttons for your uh, flight plan and so on. The larger board in the middle upper there, that is the Arduino board that mounts across in the back with a spot to hold the expansion module. So the backlight stuff, uh, you print everything in white, and then spray paint it black and then take the file and you can see the arrow there where I've I filed the black off exposing the white and when the LED backlights through it it lights up quite nicely you do the same thing with the side panels it's print a little larger of course print those in white uh, using a lower infill if or you won't get enough light trans through for them I think I did about a 15% infill and that allows a decent amount of light to come through. It's still not the best. The ideal thing would be to resin print those in white. However, my resin printer won't print big enough to do the framework as well. So there's a little quick video of the lower circuit board and the 12 soft keys. So you can see the button caps are installed on them uh, with all the push buttons in. And there are a few resistors in there. That's to pull the 12 volts down uh, so you don't burn all your 5 volt LED light bulbs up. I've actually got these laying backwards in the video. This is actually the right side PCB. As you can see all the uh, dual encoders installed, the LEDs, some plastic spacers to give you the proper standoff. And this is actually the left side. As you can see, there's all the spots for the uh, push buttons for the autopilot. Now, I did have audio for this part. Uh, I don't know what happened. It's uh, full of clicks and pops and bangs. So we'll just do a quick little voice over here. Anyways, this is the uh, unit powered up. I've just got it sitting up on top of my uh, flight yoke. And uh, flying over Kingston, the Cirrus got the autopilot set for 1,500 feet. Uh, it hadn't quite got there yet, though. You use the, you hover over the panel with your mouse and use the right Alt key, and then hit the mouse, and that'll give you the pop-up for this. As you can see there, I'm making the audio channel changes. It's changing in the sim, thanks to the interface uh, with the Arduino board of the Moby Flight. Hit the transfer button, and there you go. Now it's that active on the Com One. You set your transponder, put the manual code in. Now uh, I will have to check it. I did see the one flash there. I have to make sure that one key is working properly. Uh, and I also noticed that uh, you see the flap over speed. I have the uh, Satec autopilot panel and this uh, happens to be leaning against it and I couldn't figure out why the flaps kept coming down. Well, that's because uh, I had uh, the cable wrapped around the flap lever. So, of course, this will all get cleaned up. Like I said, this is all going to get hard mounted in a panel. And you can see the backlights there lit coming through. Uh, it really doesn't show very well because, of course, the room upstairs where the Sims currently sitting is pretty bright. But yeah, all the soft keys work. There's the ADF manual, or the ADF menu, I mean, sorry. And then you put the insert map. We can turn that on over here. Now, this is, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier. This is, I'm uh, sorry about the shaky camera work. I don't know what was going on. It's kind of hard to get the GoPro in around the yoke. Um, I can't get the map control to work on the panel. I'm going to have to take a second look at the Arduino file and see what's going on. Uh, that's one thing that uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, with the package, when you buy this online from Flight Sim DIY, they give you uh, all the uh, Mobi Flight files you need for the to run the Arduino. So there's no programming, nothing. You just install them away you go. And as you can see, the backlight's not coming through very well on it. I guess I didn't file all the paint off cleanly enough. Off some of the buttons, so I'm going to have to touch that up. 
And uh, so just there, I hit the direct two on it. And now we got the FMS controls there. And we can dial in, uh, I believe I dialed in uh, Toronto uh, Billy Bishop Island Airport. I will have to look at the Moby flight controls. I did notice uh, the tuning was very fast. I'll have to see if I can turn that down a little bit. So there's the island airport installed. Hit the enter, enter to activate it. And there you go, see? You can see the, uh, the pointer flipped around and it matches what's in the simulator. So that is the Garmin G1000 uh, by Flight Sim DIY. This is not a paid video by any means. I bought all this stuff from them. Uh, actually, everything I've got so far from them, I bought myself. So yeah, great product. Um, don't worry if you don't have a skill set to, to actually do all the work. Go to their website. They sell partially pre-built models. They sell kits. They sell the 3D, uh, uh, actual 3D physical components, pre-printed, ready to go for you. So whatever skill level you got, you can just buy what you need and go from there. So that's the end of this video. Um, what's coming down the pipe? Well, let me show you what's next. Gonna probably wrap this one up tomorrow. Kind of hard to see what that is. That is the uh, Garmin GCU 475 keyboard. So that's the keyboard that goes with this guy. So uh, it actually goes with the G, with the 1500 unit, which uh, was a video that came out last week. Uh, click the link right here. I'll put it in the end card if you want to check that out. The G1500 is a four by three resolution version of like a G3000 without any touch options. That's the keyboard that controls that for all your navigation. Kind of hard. There's the uh, overlay that goes with it. I think I talked about this in the G1500 video. But yeah, that's the next one coming down the pipe. Probably finish that up tomorrow or Sunday and uh, get that video up here in a week or so. So smash the uh, like button if you don't mind. If you like the video, hit that subscribe and uh, click the notification bell. So when that video comes out, you get notified. And then when we... Uh, when I get into building all this into the panel, like I say, that's going to be a three-part video series. I hope to have that up here in a month or so. So until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.